today I'm gonna to be updating my social media profile picture. And I thought, whilst I'm doing it, why don't I try and help you update yours too? I'm gonna to take you through logos and profile pictures. I'm gonna to talk to you about hints and tips, some do's and don'ts to help you. I've put all of the chapters in the description below. So feel free to pick which ones you want and skip ahead and watch those. Otherwise, I'm gonna walk you through step by step. Let's start by talking about the dimensions you need for your photo. TikTok's minimum upload is 20 pixels by 20 pixels, but better to go for a larger size to future proof. 170 e by 170 for Facebook, 320 by 320 for Instagram, 400 by 400 pixels for Twitter and LinkedIn, 800 by 800 pixels for YouTube. I suggest going with 800 by 800 as this will cover you for no matter what platform you are uploading to. And I used 800 by 800 for Clubhouse. In this section, I'm gonna show you how to use Photoshop to create your profile image. I'm gonna do a screen share so you can follow along, but there's also a template for you to be able to use. Right, let's go. So first of all, if you're setting up this um, profile workspace in Photoshop, um, from scratch then when you click create new um, you want it to be pixels here you want this to be 800 uh, by 800 now the reason I pick 800 is that's at the moment uh, the maximum one by one dimension that any particular profile image is so if you just create it in 800 by 800 you should be good to go once you've made your width 800 and your height 800 uh, resolution doesn't matter too much 72 will be fine but I changed mine to 300 um, and then you hit create it's just going to give you a square uh, artboard a square canvas to work on but because I've created the template I'm just going to drag and drop that in so if you've downloaded the template which will be in the description um, all you need to do is pull that across and drop it in uh, and then this is what we've got so I've already picked um, my image so I've dragged and dropped it in now now where I have this um, uh, mask on if you uh, right click so if you hold down control and you go disable the vector the, the, the shape will go, okay? But I've created that shape on purpose so you'll be able to see. So you don't have to have it there um, and you can enable or disable that. So remember, um, control, click it, and then click disable. Um, but there you can see where the curves are. You can now see where um, my image would be kind of cropped or wouldn't fit in. So if I take my image, which is in image folder one, I press command T, I can then um, transform and make this any size I want. So if you just drag it, it'll be locked automatically. If you wanted to reshape it, you could hit the shift button and this would make it a little bit more free, but you'll mess up the ratios, which is why you get bl you'll get blur. So I would say don't do that. All I did was press command Z to undo. Um, so hold that down and drag it up and then you can see the circle come into play, drag it down. And now you can basically work out where your image is gonna go so it doesn't get cut off. If you know uh, about the kind of rule of thirds, um, you, then you basically spit everything into uh, three. And if you do that and line things up on those third lines, you probably get the best um, photographic uh, layout. But um, for this, we want something, we wanna fill the space kind of as much as we can, but we don't wanna come out of this circle. So I'm gonna leave it there for now. And again, if I turn off the vector, just so you can see, that's what it would look like as a normal image. And you don't have to have the circle, um, the, the vector on, uh, keep it off and you can just check the, with the guide to make sure what's in the circle. So we can just work with this now. Now from here, you wanna do all the edits you want to do for your photo, okay? So you wanna do things like change your levels, you wanna adjust your color, make it look nice, do all the bits and pieces you want uh, until you, you're happy with it. Now I'm gonna show you something on Photoshop, um, which is how to uh, remove the background. Now as a, an image, you can't uh, just do it because it's a smart image. You need to change that to a rasterize, rasterize image not sure how to say that let me know if i'm saying it right um so all i'm going to do is make a duplicate of of that uh by just clicking it and dragging it down to the layers and you'll see the copy one uh um appears in the layers panel now if i right click that so that again that's control uh and then i can go down to here go rasterize layer i'll do that and obviously that little icon that appears there is now gone from there I'm gonna turn that off so I can't see it anymore. But now I can basically edit this um, and do bits and pieces to it that you can't do if it's a smart image. So first one is, I'm gonna go down to my quick actions in properties, layer, I've got quick actions and it will remove the background for me. And you'll see, once it does it, 
it's removed it be beautifully for me. And now I've just got a white background. So if I turn that on and off, it kind of appears and disappears. Now this is the bit where you want to put the background color in. Um, so I'm going to create a new layer in that background color uh, layer and I'm going to use a gradient. So I'm actually going to quickly change that gradient color. I'm going to use the Simply Create Orange, uh, press OK, and then again, drag and drop. You'll see now I've got the background darker to lighter. I probably want it lighter to darker, so we'll get it like that. Beautiful. Add all the bits of it you want. And again, if you want to see what that's going to look like, you can either toggle on the guide, which obviously I've used orange, so it's not you can't see it that much, but you'll see what will be cropped on. Or obviously turn on your vector that I've created for you, which is right click, enable the vector, and there you go. That's what you'll see that is in your image. Uh, and you don't need to have that vector on so you've got the white edges you can just use it as normal but that's just so you can check play around with whatever layer background you want in here whatever color um, pick any color that suits you but this is just to make it nice and simple and nice and easy from here you're going to export so you're going to go up to file you're going to go down to export here and you can just quickly export it as a PNG, um, export as or save for web, whichever one you want to, which you'll be able to chop and change different options. I'm just going to do it nice and easy for export as PNG, off you go. And so once you've used the template or created your own, once you've got the image the way you want it to and exported it, you're now ready to upload this to all your social media platforms. Hopefully I have made it nice and easy if you do have Photoshop because all you need to do is download the template in the description below, um, open it up, add your image, add your color, export and away you go. Just a couple of things to consider when you're making your profile image. One is don't just take one image or two image, really play around with different types of images, some angles, maybe something in the image that starts to tell a little bit of a story of what it is you do, uh, what you can help with, what it is you enjoy, um, something about you. Um, using the bold color. Now, obviously you can just use any bold color you like, um, but a bold color will really help you stand out or that profile picture stand out. But also your branded color will also help it rec be recognizable in the feed. So it will be bold, it will be recognizable, in an instant and that's what you want on a feed. If as a business you've chosen your logo as your profile picture, I just want to run through a few things to help that logo or your profile picture stand out. Firstly, if your logo has a lot of writing, if you've got a long company name and that is part of your profile image, consider a way in which you might uh, abbreviate it or uh, reduce it or get rid of it completely. The reason is, is the profile pictures are really small on a screen and you can't necessarily read what that business name is anyway. Also, in most of the profiles, you get to write what your company's called in another separate place. Next up, if you have a logo with a lot of detail, again, try to simplify this. Now, if your logo is your logo, which I completely understand, uh, we get precious about our logos, maybe just have another one uh, created that is for social media specifically. This will help it stand out on your profile. If it's intricate, got lots of detail, it's hard to see. And if it's hard to see, people can't identify with what it is that that logo and brand stands for. Often with a social media logo, um, simplicity is best. If you can make that logo kind of fill the space that is given, if you can make it strong and bold and simple, um, it will stand out. Um, remember, there are millions of different accounts and you want yours to be recognizable amongst all of the others. Lastly, just consider contrast. Maybe you want the background to be really bright and bold, one of your brand colors, and so then your logo will be black or white. Or you want to do that the other way around. Think about some of the other businesses in the world that do this really well. You've got things like Nike and Apple um, and Adidas and Innocent, whose logo really stands out because it's simple and it's bold. It plays with contrast and color really well, and so it stands out on that feed anyway, as well as I know it already being very distinguished and recognizable. Now I'm gonna go and update all of my social media platforms, and it's about time. The ones that I've had, some of them have been around far too long, and I haven't given it that fresh new look. So hopefully it's gonna create some brand consistency across all my platforms. People are gonna uh, know it's me and it's gonna stand out. If you stuck around this long, thank you very much. If you found it helpful or you downloaded the template, then please hit the like button. Of course, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. And as always, from Simply Create, thank you for watching.